Our guest this morning is former NBC correspondent and anchor man Chet Huntley, a man of rather towering reputation when he was on the networks and still very well known. He's been out of the business too long. But, Mr. Huntley, the, the question arises. You uh, sat in the seat of power. You had a high visibility profile. Everybody knew you, and I take it you were pretty well compensated by NBC and very well respected. You stepped down. Uh, you are seen around the country somewhat, but not to the extent you were. Is there any such thing as uh, withdrawal pains from getting down from the seat of power? <laughs> <laughs> no, there certainly uh, hasn't been in my case. I went back to my native state of Montana and uh, got readjusted in about 30 seconds. And I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I like, uh, like the life in Montana. And uh, I suppose if I were unoccupied, and had a lot of time to waste, I'd be climbing the wall these days. But I stay busy, so I haven't had time to get nostalgic about New York and, uh, and the news. But you were at the top, and you left when you were at the top. Well, there were some things, other things I wanted to do. And I guess I'm curious and sort of psychopathically uh, restive. And I thought, well, the time had come. If I ever want to do these things, I better, now's the time to start. I once heard of a story about you personally, and I never had met you before, and I wanted to check it out. Is it true that David Brinkley was the Cupid who introduced you to your <laughs> present wife? Yeah. Uh, my wife was a weather girl on the local NBC affiliate in Washington, and uh, each night before David and I would go on the network, the line between Washington and New York would be open so the engineers could adjust the color cameras. We could see each other and talk to each other. And this one night, Tippy walked in front of the camera, and I said, hey, who's that? And uh, we were introduced <laughs> over uh, the circuit. And several months later, uh, I called on, asked her for a dinner date, and that's where the trouble started. And was, frankly, the, the middle man? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. That's very good. Right. I, it sounds like a soap opera. Can this uh, yeah. weather girl from Washington, D.C. find happiness with NBC's <laughs> most noted commentator? Yeah. There was... Uh, a release not long ago that Senator Weicker came across a memo that in 1970, a White House aide proposed an attack on you, Chet Huntley, because you had been quoted in then Life magazine in an article critical uh, of the president. Had you been aware that there, that there was such an attack? No, uh, this came as a surprise to me. I'm, I'm a little shocked to think that uh, there were people in the White House next to the President of the United States who apparently had so little to do that uh, they were out to, uh, to get some of the guys in, in the press corps. Uh, I think that it seems to me, and maybe I'm looking at it from a decidedly jaundiced point of view, but I should think there would be more important things for government to do than to try to go out and destroy a, a newsman. I, I don't Were care you who aware he is. of it in 70? No, I had no notion that this was going on. came as a total surprise to me. I remember a very complimentary uh, commentary on you when your star was in the ascendancy by a man who was on an opposing network, Eric Severide, who had said some glowing things about you. Something about news that cuts across competitive lines in that respect, it seems to me. Oh, yes. That's right. This is... We compete with each other very vigorously, but uh, there are more important things on beyond that, and we find ourselves trying to improve this profession and try to, trying to protect it every once in a while, and that's when we all rally together. The role of the anchorman is uh, very peculiar to uh, American broadcasting <clears throat> these days. Uh, the anchorman is the star in a system that ordinarily would apply only to entertainment business. Glorified master of ceremonies. <laughs> well, I asked Roger Mudd about that, and he said that the recognizing, uh, the recognizable factor of going out on a story and being recognized by people interfered with a good reporter's coverage of the story. And I said, how do you like being an anchorman and all the glory that goes with it? And very succinctly, he said, if not elegantly, it stinks. <laughs> right. He, it is. Uh, he it put is. it down. He thought that uh, being uh, glorified by fans interfered with uh, a newsman's direct job of covering the news. I would agree. You, you don't like to turn people off. You don't like to be abrupt or discourteous. But once in a while, when you find yourself signing autographs, you know, you'd like to 
you'd like to have your get your hands on the guy who ever invented that that, that horrible thing. He also was restive about uh, staying in the studio as an anchor man. Uh, he seemed <clears throat> to resent that as a necessity of the business that he thought anchormen, if they really were good at their craft and conscientious, would much prefer to be out in the field. Yes, that was the the only uh, thing that uh, NBC and I used to have differences of opinion about. I would want to get out of the shop once in a while and go do a story, but no, oh, they said you're needed too badly here, and uh, <laughs> we never did <laughs> come to an agreement on that point. Not too long ago, Mr. Huntley, a Chicago syndicated columnist named Sidney Harris, whose column is carried in the Louisville Times, was speaking about the techniques that destroy the credibility of a broadcast man when the network or the news employer, if it's a local station, requires the, net, the newsman to give a commercial. And he mentioned your name. He said, now here was Chet Huntley, who was uh, objective and a nationally known anchorman and a correspondent. Now he gets off the network, and I find him doing commercials for an airline, and we feel that destroys his credibility. And, I, and he, he criticized that. Well, uh, first of all, I think he might realize that, to my knowledge, I never signed a contract which declared that I would be a newsman for the rest of my life. I left... There was a two-year interim, and uh, my interest in aviation led me then to my association with American Airlines, which I enjoy very much, and I'm proud of those commercials because I think they're well done. Now, I had to leave this to the judgment of the listeners and whatnot. It's a very subjective thing. If they want to turn me off, they've certainly got to have the right to do so. And it is true you are no longer... A newsman. That's right. I don't pretend to be doing news anymore. So therefore, I can see I, it's difficult for me to understand how or why I might have harmed or damaged uh, journalism by my association with American Airlines. Furthermore, I think advertising is just another form of communications, and it's a very important one. And it's an area where uh, I think there's a lot of work to be done. I hope to try to do some of it. Whose broadcast work do you most admire today? There are some good ones. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Walter is, is splendid. He's a genuine old pro. So is John Chancellor, just excellent. Roger Mudd is fine. And then there are some younger ones coming on. Uh, this fellow Graham in Washington now, Tom Brokaw, NBC. It's interesting to watch these younger people. You... Uh... We're here recently, and you made a speech to the Derriman Incorporated. Are you very active on the lecture tour? Oh, not terribly. I suppose I average uh, four or five a year uh, just out on my own doing a lecture. I do a number of personal appearances for American Airlines, I suppose averaging out, oh, almost one a week. You made an interesting reference in a conversation I heard not long ago. You said something about my annual bull sales, and that <laughs> caught my attention. <laughs> you are a rancher, obviously. Yes, I have a small herd of uh, registered Herefords. We hold an annual uh, production sale, and uh, so as I say, day after tomorrow is the date of my sale, and I'm very eager to get back home and see what happens. You know a lot about that. Quite a bit, yes. I raise good bulls. <laughs> you uh, had quite a conversation with the press about the... Uh, the role of the journalist. Do you see the, the journalist as a natural adversary of government? Yes. That properly is always so. The, properly so. The journalist is a, is a critic of government. That's, that's one of his chief functions. And I think we, would, could be, we should be or would be equally alarmed today if we found our press and government, you know, very cozy and just too friendly. But I think uh, this present situation, it's, that's a little bit out of hand. It's gone too far the other way. It's obvious that you don't miss being uh, back in the New Central and that you like what you're doing. Can you say as much for your former weather forecaster wife that she miss being in front of the camera? I couldn't get that girl out of Montana with dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Indeed. How good to have you on this morning. Chad Huntley, former... Uh, Ace Anchorman and correspondent for NBC, our guest on Omelette this morning, and we'll be back with more of the program in just a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.